Of course, fucking of course. I wasn't asking, I was telling. What's your name? My name is Shan Nicholson. And where are you from? I'm from Queens, New York. And now you're, you're a filmmaker, but you've gone, you've had numerous different titles uh, yeah. leading up to that. Like, can you just go into a little bit of, like, a little bit of your history in New well, York? Well, as a kid, you know, growing up in Queens, I was, I was, um, you know, I grew up around hip-hop culture, and uh, basically it went from break dancing to, you know, graffiti artist to, you know, and then eventually I, uh, in my in my my later teens and in my college days, I, I got into making beats for a while, and um, that took up a big chunk of my life was was um, DJing and, and producing and making beats and stuff like that. Um, and then to this whole filmmaking thing is just actually very recent. You know, this is like four or five years in the making, and um, it's been sort of a roller coaster ride ever since. So yeah, it was it was definitely like a progression from one to the next, but I feel like they all sort of intertwine in, in one way or another. Like you know, I wouldn't have been able to, you know, think about composing movies and putting you know documentaries together if I never worked on beats. And it's sort of the same mentality, it's the same mm -hmm. same structure, the same idea of, of of you know taking elements, different elements from different places, and and creating like a, you know something that's like a collage of sorts but it has a story. Well Downtown Calling was definitely like an experience where it was um you know shooting thirty different arrows in thirty different directions and seeing what stuck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and then making sense of like the different arrows like, oh this connects to that and that mm. connects to this and then sort of making sense of what whatever we uh whatever we shot at the time, you know. We didn't really know that there was a story at, at first. It was basically just about the music at first, hmm. and then as the more and more we we um, uh, interviewed people, we started to see connections between the art scene and the club scene and the hip hop scene, and the graffiti scene, and you know how it all sort of melted together in, in this you know downtown area basically. And what was it that inspired you to to make Downtown Calling? Like, what was the the spark. It actually started from a DJ set. Hmm. Um, I was DJing this party down uh, downtown, and I was playing all the classics. I was playing like you know stuff like from ESG and Liquid Liquid and Planet Rock and all of those kind of songs. And people kept coming up to the booth and they were saying like, "Man, I know this. I know this song. I know this. You know who is this? You know." And I knew the names of the songs. And I know sometimes I knew the names of the artists. And this was back when people still played vinyl, <laughs> you know. And it was, it was like, you know, I, some of the times it was just like we would get bootlegs of of, of Moody, and it would just say Moody on the <laughs> on the record. So I'd be like, oh yeah, it's Moody, you know. But I didn't know it was like ESC. Um, so basically, the DJ set. I mean, like four or five people came up to me, and were like, kept asking about the music and oh, who who does this song? I know this song. And like a light bulb went up because I was a big fan of um, Behind the Music, mm -hmm. um, the VH1 show. And I was like, man, wouldn't it be cool if, you know, somebody did a VH1 Behind the Music on New York City club music, you know? I was like, and it just, the whole night it stuck with me. I was like, mm -hmm. man, that would be a dope idea. It's like, I'm, I got to tell somebody about this <laughs> idea, you know? Like, this would be a cool idea. And, um, you know, it was really serendipitous that night because, like, I ended up at Vaughn. Having having drinks and I ran into a, my homeboy who was a film editor, and I started telling him about the idea and he was like, "Yo, that's a really dope idea." I was like, "Well, what do I do?" And and he basically was like, "You know, everything that you explained to me, write it down and you know mm -hmm. create a sort of a treatment." And so one thing led to the next, and we created a video treatment to go along with the with the actual written treatment, and we just started knocking on doors and started getting interviews and it started snowballing from there. And it seems like everybody wanted to talk about that era. Everybody. Mm -hmm you know, saw the value of that time and saw the value of that story because nobody's really done it right. People have covered the hip-hop scene, they've covered the club scene, they've covered the art scene, but nobody's really covered New York at that period as a sort of bigger story. You know, like New yeah. York is the common thread between all of... Downtown New York is the common thread between all of these different scenes. Of course, fucking of course. I wasn't asking, I was telling. to New York in the 70s. We were like 
the weirdos who are running away from the bullies who pick on us, the jocks and the assholes who pick on us. And today, the jocks and the assholes are all that's left. They now, they now populate New York. They now control New York. And who wants to party with them?